So welcome to our, our program tonight. My name is Rebecca Newman. I'm the VP of Marketing here at Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design, or REMCAD. Um, I'm glad that you all could make it. I think that we have a very exciting program for you tonight. tonight and uh, I'm excited to introduce Anna Moscarello, who is our coordinator of our Visiting Artist, Scholar, and Designer program. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is going. We're honored to have Justin Cooper here, not only for the, for the program tonight, but also in both of our galleries with an exhibition of new works uh, um, created for Rocky Mountain College of Art and Design here today. So to give Justin a proper introduction, I want to introduce Anna Moscarella. Um, Hello, thank you, Rebecca. Thank you all for coming tonight and braving the roads. So I am very proud to bring you the fifth installment of REMCAD's public lecture series, part of the Visiting Artist, Scholar, and Designer program. The VASD program is an interdisciplinary initiative that fosters vision, creativity, and innovation by bringing leading national and international artists, scholars, and designers to campus. Providing direct access to contemporary art, design, and culture through an inspiring comparative framework the program creates a cross-disciplinary environment made possible through appreciation and critical inquiry. As the coordinator for the VASD program, it is my pleasure to introduce our visiting artist, Justin Cooper. Very much an interdisciplinary artist, Cooper is equally a sculptor and a drawer as he is a performer. His work undermines the obvious for smart, if not mischievous, commentary on the way we spend our time. Cooper received his MFA in 2005 from the School of the Art Institute of Chicago and obtained his BFA from the University of Colorado at Boulder. His work has been exhibited nationally and internationally in places like Hong Kong, Berlin, Finland, and Brazil. Recent solo exhibitions include 2010's Office Hours, a project for the Monique Malash Gallery at Bolta in Basel, Switzerland, Thread at Gallery 400 in Chicago, and the upcoming performance, Five Pitches, at Art House in Austin, Texas. The recipient of numerous grants and awards, including a Frank Konia Sculpture Park Artist Project Grant, Cooper has held residencies in Hong Kong and Northern California, received a fellowship to the Skohegan School of Painting and Sculpture, and recently completed a stint as artist-in-residence at Redline Print Studios in Milwaukee. His relatively young career has been populated by successful performances at the Museum of Contemporary Art Chicago and at Art Basel Miami, and also by reviews and publications like Art Forum, Art in America, and the Chicago Tribune, to name a few, who champion Cooper for his compelling antics, quirks, and perhaps perverse energy. This evening, he will be speaking about his recent work, his thoughts about the afterlife, what constitutes a minibar, and why animals can't laugh. Thank you all for coming this evening, and please join me in welcoming Justin Cooper. Uh, hi. Thank you all for braving the elements this evening and uh, coming out. It's really great to see you all. Um, I just want to start by <clears throat> giving uh, a huge thank you to the school and especially to everyone who helped make this project possible. You know who you are. Um, it's been great working with you all. And especially, I'd like to thank Courtney Stell and Anna Mascarella for making tonight possible They've been incredible. And uh, let's give them a big hand. <laughs> and thank you, Anna, for that amazing introduction. Uh, so starting out this evening, um, well, the first thing I have written here is good evening. I think we got that, OK. Uh, so, in putting my talk together for tonight, I was doing some research and I kept coming across, you know, a lot of things, but one thing in particular that really jumped out at me was some thoughts by the 18th century philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer. And for those of you not familiar with him, 
uh, a basic premise of his thinking is that life has no purpose. It's a little bleak. Um, there is no grand telos, if you will. Uh, there's no ultimate direction. In fact, he refers to life as a battleground of tormented and agonized beings. <clears throat> but this is a war that has no victor, no spoils, nothing resembling some kind of glorious climax at all. In fact, instead we have, and this is a quote, momentary gratification, constant struggle, bellum omnium, which is Latin for a war of all against all. Everything a hunter and everything hunted. Pressure, want, need, anxiety, shrieking and howling. And this goes on, sacula saculorum, or until, again, the crust of the planet breaks. So for Schopenhauer, life is a tragedy, yes. But it's not even a grand tragedy. We're not heroes in some epic, you know. Nor is it a divine comedy. To put it in a more contemporary parlance, it's just a shitty movie, folks. <laughs> Direct to DVD. <laughs> right? with an incompetent director, you know, a shitty-ass script, and a terrible cast. It's bleak. It's bleak. So as you might imagine, you know, this is kind of heavy, and, you know, I'm sort of contemplating the, you know, potential purposelessness of existence, and then I'm like, what order should I put my slides in tonight? You know, it's just like, that just seems, that just seems uh, silly, you know, ridiculous. Uh, and, and a little cynical even, you know. Maybe inadvertently so, but still, it just, uh, to, to sort of go on with the, this trajectory of a, a normal artist talk uh, with its, you know, tropes and bells and whistles, I don't know, just didn't feel right. Um, so, you know, it felt, it felt comfortable, actually, to be honest. Um, it really did. It felt just comfortable to sort of pursue uh, what I normally do with you guys tonight. Comfortable. But, god damn it, a threadbare couch is comfortable, right? An old hound dog is comfortable, you know. A gigantic pile of fudge is comfortable. But is that why we're really here tonight? Really? To be comfortable? Yeah? So instead of me loftily standing up here tonight at this kind of weirdly truncated podium, <laughs> Uh, and kind of like expertly bestowing knowledge upon you, I'd, uh, I'd like to try something a little different, if that's okay. Um, I'd like to address, as well as celebrate, the nexus of intersections that exist in this room right now. Intersections that might surprise you. Intersections that might delight you. Does that sound okay? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. Because you see, I don't necessarily subscribe, with all due respect, to Herr Schopenhauer's vision of a bellum omnium, of a war of all against all. <sighs> Frankly, folks, that's not what I'm really feeling right now. 
you know? I'd like to use this evening, if I may, to offer my own humble rebuttal. So, we don't really need this. And uh, can we just turn the lights up? Thanks. That's better, right? Let me get down from here. Uh, oh. uh, yeah, right? I feel better. Now, OK, the first question is, why? Why are you doing this? A fair question, a simple question. And my friends, the answer is just as simple. Drink water. <laughs> Why? Because I like you. It's true. No, I said it. There I said it. Yeah. I like you. I like you. I like you. Thanks. I like you. And you. And you. I like you. I like you. And like you, I was also born on a machine <laughs> that processes peanuts, eggs, tree nuts, fish, and shellfish. Yeah. Like you. I, too, was lost as a child in the Museum of Natural History, OK? <laughs> and like you, I, too, was discovered six months later by that kindly nighttime janitor being raised by a diorama of wolves. It's <laughs> incredible. Thank you. I'm only telekinetic during family vacations. <laughs> what are the chances? Right. Like you, I celebrated my 21st birthday in an interdimensional tiki bar. <laughs> right. And let me just interrupt one second here, folks, before we really get into this. Um, it's, a, it's, you know, I knew tonight was special, all right? But I didn't know it was this special, okay? <sighs> because someone is here tonight that I was really hoping would be. She totally made it. Tell me your name. Elizabeth. Elizabeth. <laughs> Elizabeth, it's so great to see you. Thank you so much for coming. This is, this is huge. This is huge. Um, guys, Elizabeth, we have something in common here. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready for this? Oh, I, yeah. Okay, I, I don't know if you are, but here we go, all right? <laughs> so, Elizabeth, like you, my entire sexual development, all right, <laughs> has been painstakingly documented from birth until right now, just like yours, all right? <laughs> now, if we were to line these two films up, okay, guess what? They line up perfectly. What are the chances of that? <laughs> Nil. 
virtually nil, all right? Guys, let's give Elizabeth a big hand. And you know what? Let's just give life a big hand because it's moments like this that create philosophers. It's inc I mean, come on, come on, one more time, yeah. Uh, uh, I didn't know you were going to be here. <laughs> it's good. No, it's good. Excuse us. We're going to have a little, little thing here. I know that you've felt alone. I have too. <sighs> but you're not alone. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks. Because yeah. I've seen him too. Yeah. I've had the visions. He's appeared at the foot of my bed. <laughs> Darkest hours of the night. Who? About to get to that. <laughs> America's first funny man, Will Rogers. <laughs> he would appear covered in third degree burns, spinning his lariat. Weeping because he killed all the Indians. We'll talk more later. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It's not all fun and games, you know. It's sometimes. Sometimes things get heavy. Uh, where were we? Oh, hey, like you and Whoopi Goldberg, coincidentally, I hunt and kill humpback whales using giant underwater sonic explosions. It's awesome. Whoopi Goldberg, too? Yeah. <laughs> Believe that? Small world. Man. Smaller than we realize. It's not just fun, though. It's important. <laughs> yeah. uh, like you. How are you? OK, I've got a little confession to make here. Uh, whoa. Uh, you know that story I told about how we were uh, born on that machine, right? Uh, that's not entirely true, OK? The full story, like you, sir, just like yours, came out covered head to toe in hieroglyphic tattoos, <laughs> quoting Wittgenstein in Perfect Navajo. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Good to see you tonight. Like you. <laughs> I only read the journal Nature for the gossip columns. <laughs> right? Like you. Like us. Yeah, I know, right? right. <sighs> okay, I saw, like you, I saw my own biopic on late night TV, right? And so like crazy. you, it was crazy, yeah. but I fell asleep before the end. Always do, always do. I mean, right? It was so boring. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Who else is here? Oh, my God. Like you, sir. Hi. 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 You in the, uh, in the hat there. Hi. How's it going? Yeah, I'm great. I'm great. So, uh, like you, all right, my childhood home was haunted by blindfolded ghosts, right? And I got to tell you, folks, let me be honest here, they've been acting really emotionally distant lately. It hurts. It hurts. It does. Yeah. Like you, sir, and really, please don't be embarrassed. You're not alone. 
I also have yelled out the wrong name during masturbation. <laughs> right? It's, uh, it's awkward. <laughs> I know, it's awkward. I couldn't look in the mirror for a week, you know? Oh boy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Like you. Like you, I wonder what you think I think. You think, I think you think, I think you think, I think, you think I think, you think, I think 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 you think I've been thinking about. You know what I'm saying? That's cool, don't worry about it. <laughs> okay, like you, I don't mean to make light of this at all, okay? Um, but I also almost died from, pay attention, I almost died <laughs> from late onset ADD. Anyway. Uh, <clears throat> oh wait, 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 you hear that? No, you hear that, guys? Hold on. Baboon hearts beating together. <laughs> it's deep. It's good. It's really good. Man, it's intense. It's intense. All right, quick story. Okay, let's see. Where's the best, what's the best thing to do here? Okay, so remember that first job you had and that boss? I had him too. He's crazy, crazy guy, all right? Let me tell you a quick story about this guy. So you'd be sitting there, you know, you're like stocking groceries or something, and he'd just come up, right? And he'd just like look at you. And he'd be like rubbing his hands. And he had this weird grin on his face. Yeah. And he just stand there. And you turn around and you're like, can I help you? <laughs> I mean, you're my boss, you know. And he wouldn't say anything though. No. He wouldn't say anything, and then he'd just he'd do that laugh. Right? Remember that laugh? Right? Started out. Started out like real, real subtle. Almost like an ambient hum. <laughs> you keep rubbing his hands. Start to get higher pitch, right? A little bit louder. And his head would bob. And then it would like explode. out ah! <laughs> like he was traveling through a canyon away from you you know like ah! <laughs> 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 but you know what not to be a downer, but I'm pissed. You know why? Because like you, back in the corner, sir, <laughs> I spent 15 months of my teenage years in an iron lung. <laughs> Despite, no, in spite of a constant parade of doctors coming through my bedroom 24 hours a day with their little coats and their tiny instruments and their stupid hats and their small shoes. <laughs> Declaring me 
in perfect health. <laughs> While we're on the subject, like you, friend, I have emerged from the surf wearing nothing but freshly hewn pelts, waving an axe around, <laughs> screaming something about narrative continuity. <laughs> Like you, ma'am in the back. Yeah, you. I have stood outside my local radio shack for days upon days, yelling at anyone who would listen. And when no one would listen, I would fall to my knees and scream to the heavens, how? Why? Like you? Sorry about that. Did you get that? <laughs> uh, my apologies. I think I was a little overwhelmed. Uh, it's just not every night I meet someone like you. Forgive me. Let's switch gears. that nature preserve. And you touched a giraffe for the first time. And you said, okay. <laughs> That was me. That was me. And then a week later, when you found out that said giraffe had been killed by lightning, and you didn't feel anything. That was me too. People ask you, your parasitic twin, what's his deal? Really, what is his deal? I 
I guess ultimately, what I'm trying to get at here is we only have each other to reflect each other, right? Like the best analogy I can come up with is, it's like we're a vast hall of mirrors, you know, laughing and loving and, and crying and hooking up and having baby mirrors and growing old and dying and it's not that good of an analogy, but you know what I'm saying, right? You know? I mean, I don't know what the residual effect of tonight will be, uh, but I can tell you for myself, it's been a very powerful experience. Um, uh, and that sound you hear, it's not just our baboon hearts beating. And it's not Herr Schopenhauer spinning in his grave. It's actually him destroying a carriage with his bare hands in rage. <laughs> but we're going to let him be for now. Tip our hat as he ascends back to his noble perch amongst the pantheon. And I'd like to leave you tonight with one last thing, if I may. It's a secret. It's a special secret. And there's only one other person that I know is aware of it. You. Because like you, I know deep down. The panic is always stronger than love. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to stay. <laughs> it's not a problem. <laughs>